Do you notice anything seemingly impossible in this picture? Different wings? Well, yes, it's quite interesting, but it's not all that simple. This butterfly wasn't just born with an unusual coloring. Half of it's male, and the other half is female. How's that even possible? Oh, there are worse things in nature. Today, you'll learn how a chicken lived without a head, why sand turned into a forest, and how rocks learned to swim. Let's go. If you dig in the archives, you can find a lot of strange pictures, like this one. Meet Mike. About 75 years ago, a Colorado farmer was going to put Mike in soup and made the necessary preparations. But standard procedure suddenly didn't go according to plan because the chicken refused to die. I mean, literally. He lost his head, and after which he got up and ran, all because the axe blade missed the jugular. Even the next morning, the bird was still alive. Mike was able to balance on his perch and walk clumsily. He even tried brushing feathers, pecking food, and crowing, although he didn't succeed at any of these things. Eventually, the owner decided that the world should see the headless chicken. Besides, he could make good money out of this phenomenon. Soon, with the help of newspapers and rumors, information about the headless chicken spread and Mike began his career as a touring attraction. According to some estimates, at the peak of its popularity, the chicken brought its owners about $48,000 a month in today's money. Woo! He was a gold mine. Unfortunately, after 18 months of life after death, Mike's brilliant career came to an end. The chick was fed liquid food and water, which his owners threw right down his gullet, then cleared his throat of mucus. One day, they forgot to do this, and the extraordinary bird simply suffocated. And yet, Mike the chicken is a unique case that became a sensation. Apparently, no other animal is able to survive without a head. It's another thing to try to survive without a fragment of it, like this alligator. It was spotted in Lake Monroe near Orlando, Florida. Florida, and people got really excited about the fate of the dangerous predator. It's unclear why, but the alligator lost part of its upper jaw. Perhaps it happened during a fight with another alligator. Apparently, the animal realized how bad the damage was on its own since it came to humans for help. But having lost half of its teeth, this alligator could hardly swallow, even dropped bait, not to mention hunting. Its future was unfortunately set. But theoretically, this alligator could be cured. People have already learned how to make prosthetic devices, printed out body parts to help lead a full life. All that remains is to convince the animals. Like this raven, for example. Some time ago, Donald somehow damaged his beak and almost lost the ability to eat. So the vet gave him a new one. Three pens plus dental acrylic, and Don immediately started pecking at everything he could reach, barely out of anesthesia. Basically, he was given something like your grandmother's dentures, only a beak. While some animals need help from humans to live normal lives, others literally break down our concept of reality. This moose isn't here to live up to anyone's expectations. It's here to dive. Moose seem clumsy, silly, and very terrestrial. But this impression is deceptive. They're excellent swimmers who love to spend time in the water. Therefore, if you suddenly make a moose angry, don't even think about escaping from it in a lake. Unlike humans, moose are great at low temperatures. Even in cold weather, they can cross wide rivers and lakes. Now in the summer, lying in the shade near a pond on a hot day, moose are chilling happily. When they feel like it, they plunge into the water and can not only swim, but eat in the process. Moose are able to dive very deep to reach algae, up to four to five meters, holding their breath for half a minute. But don't think that a water moose is the most incredible thing nature has up its sleeve. How about a shark that walks on land? Yeah, you're not even going to escape it getting on dry land. Okay, cap sharks aren't a danger to humans because they prefer to feed on whatever critters they find on the bottom. But that doesn't change the fact that they can walk. These sharks are the last branch of evolution of their species. Unlike their relatives, they use their fins to move across the reefs and sand, even when they're out of water. They do just fine. If a shark finds itself in shallow water, it slows down its breathing and heartbeat, as well as the flow of oxygen to the brain. The fish's life hack allows it to live for at least half an hour without water. During this time, it's able to safely reach it on foot. Walking sharks separated from their nearest ancestor about 9 million years ago, and since then, they've gone their own way. Sorry. And if you're wondering how fish even decided to move this way, the answer's simple. The continents moved, sea levels changed, reefs appeared, and in order to survive, they had to learn to walk. In fact, someone impressionable might have already decided that these were the last days, since the fish were out of the water. Wait, that's not even the scariest and simultaneously most awesome part. We've got stones 
that float. Fortunately, not all of them. I'm talking mostly about the stones with which the so-called Adams Bridge was built. It's a string of shoals and islets in the Indian Ocean, between India and Sri Lanka. There are various legends about the construction of this bridge, but the main thing is that the local stones can really float. No underage magic, just mostly pumice. The light, porous volcanic rocks are rich in gas, located in small pockets, and it allows them to float to the surface. Water also takes part in this process. It sort of clogs up the gas inside the stones, and while well, the complicated physical details aren't that important when we have stones that float. You can see them not only in the Indian Ocean, the pumice stones appear where volcanoes erupt, and the whole flotilla of stones rushes to the horizon. And when the stones get tired of floating, they set out on a hike covering enormous distances, and even the desert can't stop them. The moving stones are a real phenomenon, for which we haven't had any explanation for a long time. Rocks move slowly in different parts of our planet, but especially often it happens at the bottom of the dried-up Lake Racetrack Playa in Death Valley in the United States. The boulders moved fairly large distances, up to 10 meters, with thin patches of ice that formed on frosty nights. The floating and melting ice moves the rocks at speeds of up to 5 meters per minute, and they scratch the desolate lake. By the way, while we're talking about deserts, here's a fact. Every year, their area is increasing, and there's nothing good about it. More deserts and desertification lead to hunger, poverty, and conflict. In short, the outlook isn't good. But China has learned how to reverse desertification. They plant trees. Yep, just like that. Huge amounts of trees and other vegetation, plus special soil stabilization, plus wind protection. It's a long, hard, and very painstaking task, but it's worth all the effort. The sands are transformed into oasis. Mankind creates life. However, sometimes nature copes by itself. And even the Atacama Desert can bloom, turning into a meadow. All it takes is a little moisture. Now, I agree the words desert and moisture don't go well together at all. But even in the most arid regions of China, there are entire lakes salty and fresh. They're simply scattered in the middle of the sands and aren't connected in any way to any river. Strictly speaking, scientists have no idea how entire lakes remain where the temperature is so high that it must evaporate them in no time. Perhaps it's all about underground springs, but the region is too poorly explored. There's no way to know anything for sure. Now look at this. Unlike the strange lakes in the middle of the desert, there's an explanation for this phenomenon, a common cherry tree that is grown on a mulberry tree. Such plants are called epiphytes, and they're not parasites, they just like to climb higher. It's like riding on the shoulders of an older brother whom you haven't asked permission, but he's too lazy to do anything about it. Epiphytes don't usually grow big, but this cherry tree decided to go against the system. Maybe it's reaching its roots to the ground through someone else's hollow trunk. The situation is quite real, though incredibly rare, and whoa! Whoa, did I say it was incredibly rare? All right, forget it. The real rarity is the story of twins Lucy and Maria Almer. Yep, you got it right. They're twins. But they don't just look like each other. They're more like complete opposites. The clue lies in genetics. Their father is Caucasian and their mother is half Jamaican. And actually having fraternal twins isn't that unique. But how different Lucy and Maria are is shocking and delightful. Nature can do amazing things. And so can people. And yet that's not the limit. See that bird? It's a northern cardinal with very recognizable plumage. Red on males, brown on females. But the individual in front of you is half male and half female at the same time. Yeah, I surprised myself. This anomaly is called genandromorphism and occurs if the sex chromosomes are incorrectly distributed throughout the cells at the very beginning of the development of the organism. Other causes are possible, but they all boil down to more or less the same thing. Something malfunctions at the stage of cell division, then everything goes wrong. Most genandromorphs are infertile, but it all depends on exactly how the division between the organism went. And remember the butterfly I showed you at the beginning of the video? The same thing happened to it. Half the body is male, half female. Ironically, there's a statistic about butterflies. This natural phenomenon occurs in only 1 in 10,000 or 0.01% of individuals. And it's 100% proved that butterfly genandromorphs don't leave offspring. In addition, they also have short lifespans because their organs are a bit mixed up. We'll see you soon.